वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स टू द क्लास नंबर फोर्टी नाइन इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द शॉर्ट कमिंग ऑफ एन डब्ल्यू सी करंट रेशो एंड एम पी बी एफ इन फुल डिटेल्स वन ऑफ द पॉइंट दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वॉज अबाउट द नॉन कंसिडरेशन ऑफ प्रमोटर मार्जिन इन ऑल ऑफ दीज कैलकुलेशन एंड आई हैव टोल्ड यू इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो दैट वी विल कम अप विद अ सोल्यूशन फॉर दैट विच इज एक्चुअली फॉलोड बाय द बैंक एज अ सोल्यूशन वाइल अजेसिंग देयर लोन प्रपोजल्स वट इज द सोल्यूशन so the solution is calculation of gearing and leverage ratio these two ratios cover up the point of promoter margin contribution in the business gearing ratio is also called debt to equity ratio you may might have heard this term before debt to equity ratio gearing ratio is also called debt to equity ratio so before starting this video if you remember i have already cleared to you the whole concept of promoter margin in the business i have cleared to you the concept of quasi equity or subordinated loans in the business so i hope you remember all these concepts that we have discussed already in the previous videos right so this is a balance sheet and this is the liability side of the balance sheet which represents the sources of funds so this is the total of liability side in other words total sources of funds of the business right so there are if we for the purpose of calculation of gearing and leverage there are two sources of funds the first source is the owned funds which is contribute which is contributed by the promoters and their closed ones right they are the owned funds who are running the business right and the third second one is the outsiders funds right owned funds versus outsiders funds right so these are the two division of the liability side of the balance sheet for the purpose of calculation of gearing and leverage so what is the example of owned funds what are owned funds owned funds are capital your paid up capital or capital plus reserve and surplus it means profits and plus quasi equity or subordinated loans that we have already discussed in the uh, previous videos right so if we add up the capital and the profits we call them tnw total net worth tnw means total net worth and when we add up add quasi equity into them when we add quasi equity into them then we call them atnw adjusted total net worth atnw means adjusted total net worth every bank in india for the purpose of satisfying their ratios norm or promoter margin norms they accept to adjusted total net worth in their calculations they principally accepts accept adjusted total net worth in their calculation however the method of calculation and how which loans will be considered as quasi which loans will not be considered as quasi it depends on the risk appetite and criteria of different banks altogether right but they principally accept this concept of adjusted total net worth hence we will calculate our ratios basis atnw only however you can also calculate the ratios basis tnw and ignore all these quasi or subordinated loans itself if you want to see the ratio on, on the basis of core capital we we can call it the core capital and this is the adjusted capital right so you can also see the gearing and leverage ratio basis the core capital if you want to if you want to assess the core capital position but principally as i have already said the banks accept the adjusted tnw concept right so these are the owned funds now what are the total outsiders funds which means the money taken or support taken from the outsiders other than the promoters right so we divide these outsiders we divide these outsiders into two parts one is the interest bearing part means those out outsiders who gets interest on the funds given by them who gets interest from us from the borrower on the funds given by them and the prime example of this are the financial institutions the banks the nbfcs they whatever they lend they charge interest or commission from us so this is the this this is called the interest bearing debt or interest bearing outsider funds or interest bearing liability right financial institutions are the prime examples of that so what financial institutions gives to you they give you term loan auto loans commercial vehicle loan loan against properties business loans cash credit overdraft letter of credit packing credit buyer's credit 
bank guarantee, bill discounting, channel finance, multiple facilities are offered by the financial institutions to you, right? So this is the prime example. And there can be others as well who are charging interest from us. They can be the unsecured loans taken from the outsiders, from any firms, from friends, which are not treated as quasi-equity by us. If you are not treating, for example, you want to calculate the ratios basis core capital only, then how will you treat this, this amount? How will you treat the quasi-equity or subordinated loan amount in, in here? You will consider it part of the total outsider funds, first point. And out of that total outsider funds, if you are paying interest to them, then you will classify them under interest bearing. If you are not paying interest to them, then you will classify them as non-interest bearing, right? So you can know that from the promoter, whether you are paying interest on them or not. And you can also see from the profit and loss account, whether interest is paid on them or not. So the second one are the non-interest bearing debts. What are these? Creditors, they do not charge separate interest as such. Salary payable, expenses payable, uh, statutory dues payable, TDS payable, GST payables, right? These are the amount which are non-interest bearing debt. These are the debts in which there is no prime condition of paying the interest, right? You, you, will have, you may have to pay interest if you delay in deposit of GST. You may have to pay interest if you delay in deposit of TDS. But this is not the primary condition or primary feature of these funds, of these funds. You may have to pay interest to the creditors if you pay late to them, but that doesn't make them a interest bearing liability, right? Interest bearing liability is the liability in which the prime feature is that, that they will charge interest for the, for every single rupee lent by them, right? So these will be classified as non-interest bearing. So if you have understood this, now the calculation of ratio is very simple. I am calculating the adjusted gearing only, right? As I have already told you, I am considering ATNW. You can also consider core capital here, uh, means capital plus reserve and surplus. And in interest bearing debt, then you have to classify this into in interest bearing or non-interest -inter bearing as per your choice, as per the case to case basis, right? So what is adjusted gearing or debt equity ratio? What is debt equity ratio? debt equity ratio we want to see how much interest bearing debt the business has taken from the outside how much the interest bearing debt the business has taken from the outside and versus how much business have invested on its own we want to compare both of these terms we want to see how much interest bearing debt is taken from the outside and against that how much money is invested by the business uh, by the promoters in their business we want to compare these ratio so we take interest bearing debt into numerator and atnw into denominator and suppose if the interest bearing debt is rupees 90 and atnw is rupees 30 that means you have taken three times of your atnw as interest bearing debt in the business so this is your debt equity ratio or adjusted gearing ratio right naturally if you take instead of ATNW, you take core capital or TNW. If you take only TNW and you classify uh, these quasi equity amount as interest bearing, suppose they are interest bearing, then your numerator will increase and denominator will decrease. And this ratio, which is coming as 3x, will come as 4x or 5x as per the calculations, right? So uh, if you do the calculations by TNW, then your ratio will drastically decrease, right? And if you take the ATNW ratio, then your overall ratio will improve. So higher the ratio, the worse it is. So if your if uh, interest bearing debt is rupees 90 and your ATNW is rupees 10, then the ratio is 9x. Means nine times of your capital that you have chose to take on funds from outside, right? That means very lower stake that you have invested on your own in the business and most of the funds are invested by the outsiders which represent a high risk of default by you. You may not be serious or uh, caretaking about your business, right? So higher the ratio, the worse it is. So the acceptable level of by if we consider ATNW, the acceptable level is usually considered as 3x in the banking sector, right? Some of the banks may consider four, some of the bank may consider five. It all depends on the risk appetite of the banks. Usually 3x is the acceptable level of, for this ratio. Now, what is the leverage ratio or adjusted leverage ratio? 
in adjusted leverage ratio you take all the outsider funds irrespective of the fact that whether they are they are interest bearing or non interest bearing you take total outside funds and you compare it with the own funds you want to see how much others have invested and how much the promoters have invested in the business it's the simple comparison of this right so in the numerator you have taken total outside liabilities right this include interest bearing as well as non interest bearing liability while the denomin denominator remains the same in both the cases right since in leverage ratio your numerator is of bigger amount since you are also you have also added non interest bearing liabilities your numerator is bigger and your denominator is the same so this ratio will always be higher than what you have computed in gearing ratio if your gearing ratio is coming as 90 divided by 30 is 3x then your this ratio will be more than that because you in 90 you will also add the non interest bearing liabilities suppose the they are rupees 50 or uh, 60 right so this becomes 150 divided by 30 the denominator is same so ratio will come as 5x right so gearing ratio will al always be lower than the leverage ratio and both of these ratios are actually checked by the banks in order to remain consistent on their policy about the contribution of promoters in the business right so this ratio is acceptable at the level of 4 to 5x again it can vary as per the profile of the banks and profile of the customer right so the next question is how to improve this ratio both of these ratio how can we improve these ratios right so if you think carefully the more the ratio is the worse it is so we have to decrease the ratio so we have to decrease this ratio then how can we decrease the ratio there are only two ways to decrease the ratio first first is we reduce we reduce the numerator one second way is we increase the denominator right now the question is if you reduce the numerator reduce the numerator that means you are paying off the debt that means you are paying off the debt to pay off the debt you need funds to pay off the debt you need funds from where they the funds will come from whatever if you borrow the funds from outside then again it will it will again impact your leverage ratio if you are raising for example non interest bearing debt to pay off the interest bearing debt to improve the gearing ratio that means you are making the leverage ratio worse and improving your gearing ratio so the only solution to improve both of these ratio is increasing the denominator amount increasing the denominator amount so you have to increase the atnw you have to increase the owned funds in the business and you have to infuse more capital in the business more quasi equity in the business if you want to improve these ratios so that is how because if these ratios gets worse the banks will not give you funding any any funding support so these ratios practically measure the atnw or the promoter margins uh, in the business hence any improvement in this ratio is fully only and only dependent upon the improvement of atnw in the business so this ratio removes the deficiency of what we have seen in nwc and current ratio calculation right i hope you have enjoyed this video we will meet in the next video thank you very much